Hey guys, welcome to Safi Maxed. In this video, I would talk about the discovery dilemma and its solution regarding the well-known phenomena of old quantum mechanics, the Compton effect. Arthur H. Compton was an American scientist who conducted a series of experiments on the scattering of X-rays through light elements. In 1922, Compton observed that when a monochromatic beam of X-rays of wavelength lambda is allowed to fall on a light element such as carbon, it emits electrons. In the incident X-ray scatters at various angles. The ejection of electron from the target element by itself was not a surprise as it is nothing but plainly the photoelectric effect. However, the outgoing scattered beam showed a very astonishing behavior which became the focus of Compton attention. The scattered beam has maximum intensities at two different wavelengths one maximum occurs at the incident wavelength lambda and the other maximum occurs at a big longer wavelength which I will denote with lambda prime. The output of Compton experiments is shown in the figure. This is the original figures of Compton's paper published in Physics Review with volume 21 page 483 in 1923. We see only one peak in figure A. This corresponds to the outgoing beam at an angle of zero degree to the direction of incident beam. And figure B at an angle of 45 degree to the direction of incident beam. In addition to the peak at original wavelength, another peak appears at a bit longer wavelength. At larger angle, the additional peak become more prominent in intensity and get shifted to the region of longer wavelengths. So this is what Compton observed in his experiment. Let us now talk about what was so astonishing regarding the existence of intensities at two different wavelengths in the scattered beam. The presence of radiation of wavelength lambda in the intensity profile of scattered beam is normal. But the presence of radiation of longer wavelength in the scatter beam cannot be explained on the basis of classical electromagnetic theory. According to the classical electromagnetic theory, the oscillating electric field of the incident electromagnetic wave would cause the electrons in the target material to oscillate with the same frequency as the frequency of the electric field of the incident radiation. The oscillating electron will in turn re-radiate electromagnetic radiation in all direction. This is visualized in the simulation where an incident electric field is hitting an electron which is denoted by yellow disk. The electron oscillates with the frequency of incident field and along with that it also produces its own electric field of frequency equals to the frequency of incident radiation. And this is further visualized in the second simulation at the bottom. Moreover, due to the pressure exerted by incident radiation, the electrons would also slowly begin to move in the forward direction of incident wave. As a result of this linear forward motion, there would be a developing Doppler shift in the wavelength of emitted radiation. As a result, the radiation emitted by electron in the backward direction would be a progressively longer wavelength and the one emitted in the forward direction would be a pro progressively shorter wavelength. However, as these two figures show, the experimentally observed results of Arthur Compton were quite different from the ones expected by putting radiation in the picture of classical electromagnetic theory. In other words, Maxwellian theory of electromagnetic radiation, which is based on classical description of electromagnetic theory, 
fails to explain the existence of a peak at longer wavelength in the intensity profile of the scattered outgoing beam. How did Compton successfully explain these experimental results theoretically by putting two different concepts given by Einstein, one from relativity and the other from old quantum theory. To know that, watch the second part of Compton effect. <laughs>